my PowerPoint is getting set up. Um, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Sarah Greeter, and I'm a junior at the university here, and I'm currently the RA of the Sustainability Living Learning Community. And this community is currently housed in our Lincoln Avenue Residence Hall on the east side of campus. It's its first year. We have 60 students, um, a very diverse community. We have 17 international students and five out-of-state students in our community, as well as being composed of about 75% freshmen. Awesome, thank you. So here's just a picture of our community and what I just described. So first I'll just begin um, defining like what is a living learning community. And so here, there are currently nine of these on campus. And in learning, living learning communities, students are um, grouped by either major, interest, um, particular issues. So with us, it's sustainability. And this is, again, like I said, the first year that it's been around. Um, several groups lobby to try to get this living learning community um, to become a reality in university housing. So we're really excited about that. And um, each floor has this certain theme that sort of shapes the programs and opportunities available to these students throughout the year. And I'll be talking about these opportunities today. Um, well, academics are certainly one of the main focuses um, on our campus. Um, in the Living Learning Community model, we believe that this learning goes far beyond just the classes that you take and goes into the places of residence. So we continue to provide the social resources and community development that you see in any other traditional form, but then with supplemental um, academic resources that are offered to help the students learn under our motto of uh, living and learning about diverse aspects of sustainability in a variety of ways, so academically, organically, and experientially. And these are just some pictures of our students that you'll see throughout the presentation. So one of the first ways of doing this is with our courses. Our enrollment in these classes is really nice because it's a very small community of students. Um, you get to have really great interactions with the professors because compared to their whole campus enrollments, the enrollment numbers are much reduced. So um, you can also facilitate better relationships with the peers that are in your classes. And we've offered a variety of classes so far. Um, this past year, such as Atmospheric Sciences 120 and Geography 106, and courses for next semester and in further opportunities include Atmospheric Science 140, which is Climate and Global Change, and ESC 497, which is going to be a field trip to Dixon Springs, one credit hour course. So we're very excited about that. Moving on to our orientation. All living learning communities on this campus have an orientation that occurs before the students move in. And it's a perfect way to connect these students to the resources that are offered to their specific living learning communities, as well as what their particular issue is. Um, these are often very fun ways where they get to meet others in, like, for, in the staff of that particular LLC, such as um, like the RAs or our program coordinator, Anna Nesbitt. And then we also have um, just activities throughout the days that help them bond with one another. So in these pictures here, um, we did some activities such as like geocaching, bike tours of the Champaign-Urbana community, um, eco-shopping tours of the community, um, some upcycling projects as well, which are, which are pictured. And we're very much looking forward to this next year's um, orientation, which currently myself and Nesbitt and other of our residents are helping plan right as we speak. So then to take our learning beyond our campus, we had several um, fun opportunities and retreats throughout this year. Um, we had an amazing fall retreat this past September at Turkey Run State Park in Indiana. And throughout the weekend, there students camped out for two days and we volunteered at the local nature center there. We canoed, we hiked, we had um, an astronomy lesson there in the beautiful um, open area, great stars out there. Um, and then also, this past spring break, we had several students from our LLC participate in a Costa Rica study abroad trip. And they, the girls who attended described it as just an incredible experience, one they'll never forget. The course that they took over there um, taught them about rainforest ecology, land use issues, sustainable agriculture, developing economies, and geologic features of the landscapes, such as volcanoes and rivers, while they were there. And these are several pictures of the people in the program. And now that I've highlighted um, several of our larger scale programs, we also have done a lot of really 
awesome educational programs um, throughout the year that were a little bit smaller scale, but that many of our residents enjoyed. Um, one of which is our Visiting Scholar Series, and we were really lucky to have a variety of professors come in to talk to us about um, their work or what they're doing in their particular field, um, and just engage students in dialogue about this and about sustainability as a whole. And so we were very lucky to have um, John Marlin, Steve Marchak, Bill Sullivan, and Robert McKinn um, for like speakers this past year. And then also we had an opportunity to um, have dinner at the Red Herring with Dr. Antria Cohn, who is the founder of the Institute of Sustainable Economic, Educational, and Environmental Design. And so all of these were very great educational opportunities. Um, we also went hiking at Fox Ridge State Park, which is one of the pictures in the top right corner. Um, and had a green TV series in which we viewed and discussed environmental media, such as TED Talks, YouTube videos, and movies, and discussed them afterwards. Um, we hosted a Green Eats series, which um, taught residents about sustainable cooking um, and taught them how to make several dishes as they go on into apartments in their future or um, just in life in general, one of which, like an example, like homemade hummus, those sorts of things. Um, our attraction show gave residents to learn about the waste we produce and to channel their creativity to construct outfits out of materials that would have been thrown away or recycled otherwise. Um, and we also toured the Urbana Champaign Sanitary District Open House and learned just about how water in our community is treated. A few more programs. We volunteered, um, first semester we volunteered at the Students in Sandal Farm. We also had a program where students were able to plant um, their own seeds and um, that was open to beyond just our LLC as well, to try to engage more students and promote our, um, promote our LLC within our building. And then uh, most recently we requested to have the San Francisco-based Teens Training Green Organization come to the U of I as part of their road tour across the country um, to engage college students in a model of more conscious living rather than just conventional living. And you can see in the picture um, in the lower left of uh, some of the tabling we did with uh, one of the programs where that was our conscious information station that provides samples, demos, and educational activities and those sorts of things. And so what's next for us? We are very excited that we are expanding next year to be two floors so there won't just be one RA and one community but two of us working together and we'll be able to have a hub of 220 students next year. And, um, we are already receiving essays for applications for next year, so we're really excited about that. And then, I really appreciate having the opportunity to speak here today, and if you have any questions or comments about the work we're doing or want to talk to us, you can talk to either myself or our program coordinator, Anna Nesbitt. So thank you very much.